Fox News face Tucker Carlson now insists that the trans movement is targeting Christians. Why are some trans people so angry and why do they seem to be mad specifically at traditional Christians? We can't think of any trans person who's ever been murdered by a pastor. As far as we know, that has never happened. So it's not an actual threat of violence from Christians that's inspiring some trans people to buy AR-15s. No, it's, it's got to be more fundamental than that. And it is. The right's revamped its anti-trans propaganda, and it'd be laughable if it weren't incredibly dangerous. Welcome into TYT Overruled. I am your host, Adrian Lawrence. In the wake of a trans man murdering six people, including three children at a Nashville Christian school on Monday, while well, members of the far right have been adapting their anti-trans messaging to really meet the moment. Before we get back to Tucker, while well, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene decided to use her time yesterday at a congressional hearing to somehow suggest that the trans community is responsible for the COVID-19 school closures or vice versa? The gigantic impact on mental health of our kids while they were being forced to stay home, many of them alone by themselves, sitting in front of a screen for most of their waking hours as they were trying to educate themselves with online learning, which was a failure for many, but they were also spending their time on TikTok and Instagram, which are two poison pills for our children's minds. And since, since this time, these school closures, we've seen a dramatic increase in trans-identifying children, which is something that was not normal nor common uh, many years before this. And I think that's completely devastating. Green clearly despises pandemic protocols so much that she's claiming that they are responsible for more trans children or more children embracing their gender identities. This ideology is as illogical as it is ignorant. But MTG wasn't alone in peddling her transphobic messaging. Her pal Don Jr. shared his insight. It's happening. The media is framing the Nashville, Tennessee murder of three innocent young children and three adults at a Catholic school as dangerous for the trans community. When, when a Christian school was shot up and Christian children killed in cold blood by a trans murderer with a manifesto that says, you mess with our kids, we'll kill your kids. They're, blame, they're, they're covering up the nonsense. Remember, folks, there's a clear epidemic of trans or non-binary mass shooters, people who, according to the CDC, make up 0.6% of the adult population of this country. You add in children, and it's significantly less. The media is totally silent, except for to blame you or to call you a bigot for pointing out the trend. Not only is there no epidemic or rise in trans or non-binary mass shooters, but that's not even really possible. The vast majority of mass shootings are still committed by cis white men. The only thing that Don Jr. came remotely close to, as far as I'm concerned, and getting correct in that anti-trans video was that the trans community in the United States is incredibly small. It is less than 2%. I'm talking 1.6%. But if you talk to Tucker Carlson, he'd say that number is on a meteoric rise because of the prestige associated with identifying with a gender different from that which was assigned to you at birth. But if you're trans in this country, obviously there are many downsides, but there do appear to be some benefits. It's a lot easier to get into Harvard, for example. It's definitely easier to get a job at Citibank or in the Biden White House. If you're transgender can so much as fly a kite, the Pentagon will happily make you an F-35 pilot just so Hollywood can make a movie about it. Identifying as trans, whatever, again, its downsides, does convey status in this country, which is why so many young people now do. And why wouldn't they? The people in charge despise working class whites, but they venerate the trans community. People are just responding to incentives. It's rational in a way. That rant was so blatantly false, I don't even think I can call it propaganda. Being trans in America can be a death sentence and is for a number of people. Tucker Carlson knows that. He knows that near 30% of trans people live in poverty, that trans people are four times more likely to experience violent crime, including sexual violence, aggravated and simple assault, and so much more. In the past year, one in three trans youth reported attempting suicide. Almost one third reported being victims of sexual violence and more than half reported a two week period of depression. All of those facts are well known to Tucker Carlson, but his goal is to get his right wing Christian coalition to crucify trans people. 
He makes that clear with his implicit messaging. The trans movement is the mirror image of Christianity and therefore its natural enemy. So Christianity and transgender orthodoxy are wholly incompatible theologies. They can never be reconciled. They are on a collision course with each other. One side is likely to draw blood before the other side. This is dangerous. If you don't understand gender identity or trans issues, that's fine. You don't have to understand all of it. But if you're a progressive, you should be using your voice to stand up against attacks against the queer community. Why? In part because they were one of fascism's first targets in Nazi Germany. And this history is seeming to repeat itself. We have to unite with the trans community. If not because it's the right thing to do, but then at least do it because we know we'll be next.